All right, let's finish up the Tremors film franchise with Tremors, A Cold Day in Hell, because I guess this was time to drop the numbers with six. So this is just Tremors, A Cold Day in Hell, no six on it. Uh, every film franchise eventually drops their numbers. All right, so this one is set in the ice. Um, so we get a sign for perfection. Now, I'm sure this was in the other movies, but it was established in 1901, having now watched four, where we find out that that takes place in 1889. This is established in 1901. That is 12 years later. So, did it take them 12 years to change the name from rejection to perfection? Is there some other thing that goes into establishing a town for it to be 1901 and not 1900 or uh, 1890 should I say so I don't know I don't know if that continuity works but at the same time I don't think there's anything wrong with it I think that you could fudge it any way you want to make it work um, so the IRS comes for Bert's property and uh, I like that they actually mentioned that Jody is letting him or took is taking over the store or whatever. So he mentions Jody from part three. So good continuity there. Um, I like that he has survivalist DVDs in the store. Makes sense. That's what they were going to be doing during part five and after part five. Um, and he was even shooting some as, as I had mentioned in part two. So makes sense. So that, that the continuity is good there. Um, I thought, I feel like they pushed the PG-13 writing a decent amount here because we have a scene where they find like a completely mutilated torso, legs, arms, head, everything gone from it. And like the torso itself isn't even doing that well. It's been all chewed up and chomped and there's arms and legs and shit laying around it. So, so I was like, wow, this is pretty brutal for a PG-13 movie. And it's, you know, it's lower budget. You could tell, but. For a straight-to-DVD sequel in the sixth film in a franchise like this, I'm still pretty impressed by the quality of it. I, I would think they would have dropped into ridiculously terrible territory by this point, but I think it's just as good as five, and, and I like it. I actually like um, five and six probably more than three and four. So I think they've actually gotten better since like the first two. Um, I hope I would like to see a seven. I definitely would watch it. So I hope they make that. Uh, Jamie Kennedy returns here as, as his um, as his son, and so they are called over to the Canadian Arctic because they have graboids there, and he doesn't believe it, but. Bert, Bert's always overly prepared, as we know in every movie. He's so overly prepared that not only does he own snow camouflage, which just doesn't surprise me, but he puts it on while he's still in perfection. He's in Nevada, and he has to fly all the way up to the Canadian Arctic. And it's like, you think you may have put on the camouflage a little early? Like, just pack it, maybe, and just go in what you're in. Like, he had to change into it. He wasn't in that when they called him, obviously. Why would he be? He had to go change into it. And that's hot shit. He's out in the desert, and he puts on, like, full fatigues, snow fatigues, out in the desert. I'm not sure what the thought process there, but it's Burt Gummer, man. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's outside of his character. I just thought it was really funny. Then we get an ass blaster versus plane here. Um, I think that if the budget would have been a little better, we would have seen a little more action there, a little more dogfighting or something, but we haven't really seen any shriekers in a while. It's been a while since we've seen some shriekers. Like, I'm not, I'm not 100% on this, but I feel like the last time we saw a shrieker was since the second one, when they were introduced. I could be wrong on that. I'm not remembering any other. I feel like ass blasters and and graboids have been in every one since the introduction of the ass blasters in three. So from three 
to six, there's like ass blasters and graboids in every one of them, but I don't remember any shriekers in three through six. So are they just not in the franchise anymore? I, I, I'm the one that just watched it, so I'm not really no, sure why the hell I'm asking you guys, but I wasn't really paying attention to that. I was just paying attention to the monster action and the graboid and the ass blaster. They were definitely in every one of them, but I don't remember any, although no, okay, I shouldn't say that. Four, there was just graboids. Um, anyway. Um, all right. So then they get there and they meet Val and Rhonda's daughter. So we do get confirmation that Val did marry Rhonda and they had a kid together. So it was cool to get a little call back there. Um, and it also makes sense that uh, she is a scientist because her mom was one as well. And that's why she's obsessed with graboids with her graboid boots that Val made her. Thought that was cool as well. Man, there is a lot of hot-ass scientist women in this movie. I'm not saying hot-ass scientist women do not exist, but a cluster of them like that all in one area? Very unlikely. Dr. Sims? Whoo, she's hot, man. She might be the hottest chick in this freaking whole franchise. That girl in the last one I was talking about from South Africa was possibly the hottest chick in the series. And this girl came in and was like, damn, all the chicks in this movie were attractive outside of that crazy freaking pilot chick but out, yeah outside of her like pretty much every other girl in this movie was was wonderful um and all right so bert becomes infected and it's been like this slow 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 long ass freaking i almost said slow and long together and that would have made schlong would have made slong but pretty damn close to schlong so I almost said it. You could, I'm sure if you rewound it, you could hear me go, and I kind of faded off. But okay, that's probably overkill. It's not what I said, but I was about to say it. Um, but yeah, Bert got eaten in part three. And because of that, there's this like long ass gestation period where all these years later, all of a sudden, that was me fighting a yawn, if you were wondering what the hell I was doing there. Um, he all of a sudden is now dying from it. He's, he's freaking out. I like that he goes out to save this guy, and he's like, you need to do everything I do. And this part confused the shit out of me, because I didn't know what this guy was doing, but I realized what he was doing after like a minute. But Bert starts freaking out, and he had one of these freakouts earlier in the movie where I was like, is he having a panic attack is he having what the hell is this Does he have an heart attack and then the guy starts doing it with him he's like oh, oh and he's like falling on the ground the guy behind him is doing the exact same thing so at first i'm thinking is this a new tremor like is this something that like can send out a signal that fucks with your brain or is like do they have like a neurotoxin or something and then i realized like no bert's sick and this guy is just following his orders like do everything I told you to tell you to do. Like, follow my every move. And so he starts doing The guy starts doing it with him. So I just, I thought, yeah, they were they were both feeling the effects of something. But no. So that was pretty funny to realize a little bit later. Um, I like how no, there's this really hot scientist chick who's helping Bert and them. And then she just gets, like, a graboid around her arm. And she gets, like, a graboid around her chest. And she's like pulled out the window. She's like, please help, help, help. And they're just grabbing her arm instead of coming in and like grabbing her around the waist and trying to pull her. I think you'd have a lot more. Whatever. So she just gets pulled out the window and boom, like everyone just doesn't care. I love how in movies, I've talked about this so many times, but it's just so funny to me every time. Unless like main characters to the story die, everyone just doesn't care. Even if they've been around them you know these people have probably been around these people for years but she just gets pulled out the window and it's like meh but if Bert Gummer who just showed up and they don't know at all was to get hurt they'd all freak out I mean yes he's there to kill the monsters so they do need him to save them but it would be a more dramatic thing it'd be like oh my god oh my god is he okay this kind of shit and it's like that chick just died no one even blinked an eye so they need to do a lot better job of mourning the loss of background characters, secondary characters, because it just it feels so unnatural 
when a character that was part of the crew dies and no one really gives a shit. They're just kind of like, they're like, oh, oh well. Anyways, what is our plan? Like, <laughs> there's like no moment. They don't take even a second. All right. So yeah, he's infected. He's dying. They need an antidote that would be made from uh, a living. There's like a sack in its throat. It's like a uvula. uvula. And they have to like suck this shit out. That's way later in the movie. But it's like, how the hell are we going to catch a graboid? Um, and all right. So here's a couple weird scenes. <laughs> I thought these to be pretty funny. So they're all getting attacked. So they are trying to get up on certain, you know, get up on top of things like in every one of these movies. So uh, Dr. Sims, the hot Dr. Sims, is running over to Jamie Kennedy um, who for some reason I can't remember what the hell his name is in this, but he's running over there and she, she, he grabs her arm and the grab boy grabs a hold of her pants and he's like, take off your pants. And she's like, no. And he's like, take off your pants. And she's like, no, I can't. I won't. And he's like, why? She's like, because I'm not wearing any underwear. And it's like, okay, this is where it's weird. A, you would rather die, die. And this girl's gorgeous, mind you. Now, that doesn't mean she doesn't have insecurities. People have insecurities. The most gorgeous people you've ever met in your life probably have more insecurities than people who you don't find all that attractive. That's, that's usually how it goes. I've dated a lot of really, really attractive women in my life. Oh, wow, that sounds like gloating. It isn't, I swear. But it's trying to play. Okay, how about... I must, I've been a hairdresser a long time and I've worked with a lot of beautiful women. Does that sound better? Um, and they have the most, like, they have the most fucking insecurities of anyone I've ever met. <laughs> so now, of course, obviously beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So who am I to say who's beautiful and who isn't? You know what I mean. Classically beautiful people who, you know, the general consensus would agree, like, oh, wow, that chick is fucking beautiful. Usually those chicks are like, oh my God, you know, don't, you know, whatever. So, but yeah, you would rather die than let someone see your pussy. Like for real or your naked ass or your naked fucking, really? And then B, she pulls him up there and when he finds out like, oh, because I'm not wearing any panties, he's, then he's hitting on her. And it's like. And, and she's giving it back to him, but I call bullshit on that because you were so afraid of him seeing you without your pants on, without underwear, but you're into him? I mean, I guess, maybe, like, I didn't want him to see me naked until I gave it to him, you know, the way that I want to or some bullshit, but really, you're going to die? Like, would you really, is there people out there who would rather die than have people see their genitalia? I mean, I'm sure there are, but what the fuck? Anyway, okay, I've spent way too much time on that. And I'm probably going to spend way too much time on this next thing. So, so Bert asks one of the other scientists there with him, this dude, to whip out his dick and piss because, kind of hearkening back to the first Tremors, when she breaks the pipe open and then the water draws it away so Valentine can get on the tractor, hook it up, whatever. So he takes a piss and he's just like, no one look, no one look. And so Valentine's daughter takes her sniper rifle and like pinpoints it on his dick so that she can get a look at his dick and then makes this, you know, this claim like he's got game. He must have a big dick or something, whatever. But okay. She pointed a loaded sniper rifle with a finger on the trigger at his dick. Put his dick in the crosshairs of her, the sniper rifle. Okay. I'm not a shy guy. Okay. So if people want to look at my dick, go for it. If I pull it out in public, then you have every right to go ahead and check it out. But please don't point a sniper rifle at it and put my dick in the crosshairs, okay? That's that's just a little too risky. You don't want to have a Pulp Fiction Marvin getting shot in the face moment with your dick. Like, oh, he's hot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, And I'm sure if a guy did it on the flip side, when a girl's like, don't look, don't look, and then he looks with a sniper rifle at her tits, everyone would be like, oh my God. 
It was such a double standard when it comes to that kind of stuff, but whatever. All right. Um, and then I like that we find out that his son got his HK-91 from Heather, Bert's ex-wife. But he sends her the HK-41. Unless I heard that incorrectly, but I'm pretty sure that's what he sent her. So I don't know if that's supposed to be that same gun or if it was a different one or whatnot. But he does get it from Heather. So I like that she's brought up again. Um, no love interest for Bert. Ever since Heather left, there's never been one. I mean, you kind of have one with Hiram, you know, his, his ancestor. But you never, you never get another love interest for Bert. That's kind of odd. He's the main protagonist of this franchise and since his life, wife left him in part two technically he's never had another woman come around that he's had any interest in kind of odd a little bit um i think the ground rippling in this one is the scariest it's been i like the way it's shot and it's almost always used Anytime a, a tremor or a tremor, a graboid or anything is coming, it always ripples the ground. And they show it from behind when people are running and it's just like coming up behind them. That looks absolutely terrifying. Like, I don't feel I don't feel like I've thought about this movie realistically because it's just kind of a fun adventure monster movie franchise. So I've never really sat down and thought about it like realistically, like these things coming after me. But having seen this movie, honestly, this is the one that made it the most terrifying to me and made it feel realistic is the couple shots I saw of the ground rumbling towards them and you know, it was rippling behind them like a freaking wave coming at them. It looked terrifying. And I was like, oh my God, if I was in that situation, if I was really in this situation, how horrifying would this situation be? Like any of these Tremors movies, this thing that's just under the ground, it could pop up at any moment and swallow you whole and has like three snakes that come out and grab you and yank you in. And oh my God, people would be absolutely crippled with fear. Um, And then, <laughs> so the the dudes that have this you know this this black ops facility there they want a live graboid and you know so kennedy goes over and he's like we don't want to pay taxes ever again which reminds me of course of the crew from armageddon and it was like we don't want to pay taxes ever um but yeah, so they end up catching it. They end up getting Bert better. And then they he hands the tax papers over to him. And as soon as he has them in his hand, they have the RC plane fly into the mouth and blow the thing up. Okay. A, I'm pretty sure they could make those contracts null and void almost instantly. B, they would probably shoot them right there. Like all of them. And be like, well, the Graboids took them. Sorry. So I call bullshit. You don't screw with the government like that and, you know, double cross them because, A, you ain't getting that freaking tax. Report. At bare minimum, you ain't getting that. Whatever you ha are holding in your hand is shit because that's got to be a pretty rare document. Like how many people do they grant, you know, immunity of, of any taxes of any sort to? Don't, we're not going to get into political discussions here over, like, tax cuts and all that shit. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, like, a specific person that no matter who's in office, no matter what's going on, they can't be taxed. Like, I do not know of anyone who, who exists with that little clause, but I can only imagine it would be overturned pretty much instantly after they got it. Anyway, all right. Um, and the, the son has to crawl into a mouth after they kill all the snakes. Although he's like, don't use a gun. We don't want to kill it. And then Bert has to come out with a gun and shoot all of them. So it's like Bert just came out and did exactly what they said not to do. But I guess he's the best shot. And he came from the side, which would make a whole lot more sense if you just wanted to shoot at the snakes. Have someone stand in front of them, have the snakes come out, and just pick them off one by one from the side so they're not shooting into the graboid. doesn't matter. Um... 
But yeah, then he has to crawl in there and they just keeps hacking up this fluid, this bile all over them. Ugh. And so he goes and he, and he finally makes out with Dr. Sims here after being kind of um, forced into it is his manhood is called into question. And so much like Valentine in the first movie after um, Earl gives him shit to go and, and take Rhonda like he should, same thing happens here and he goes and decides to kiss her like they're leaving. They're leaving in that moment. And he's almost completely clean. This is yet, this is yet another one of those moments because they were right by that thing when it exploded. And it's like, right before you left, like they're out of there. They wouldn't clean up first. They wouldn't like go in the bathroom and like clean up their face, maybe change their clothes before they left. Like, really? I <laughs> but he still has like a bunch of goop on the side of his face, and then he goes over and he makes out with her, and it, it'd be like, can you, can you clean up first? I mean, you already look dirty and gross as fuck anyway, but now you're even adding to it? All right, guys, that's it. So, uh, Hal Grimmier, you've got it, buddy. I did the Tremors franchise for you. I'm not sure how I'm feeling about the TV series right now. I'll get to it. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it, like, really soon. I just have a lot of stuff to get to. Um... Yeah, I want to do it for sure. Have you even seen that? Has anyone, does anybody care? Does anybody give a shit about the the Tremors television series? I definitely want to watch it. I'll probably watch it soon. So anyway, guys, there you go. Tremors franchise in the books. I had never seen four and I had never seen six. So now I've seen them all and back to back. So I know the, the flow of it. And I, I found very little consistency flaws. Pretty surprised by that. The only thing I really can call into question is the 1889 Tremors 4 and established in 1901 in in uh, at least Tremors Cold Day in Hell. So I don't know if it says that in other movies. I'm sure that it does. But 1901, 12 years later. Interesting. Anyway, guys. All right. Adios.